So can I start with uh, Tam Chang? Okay. So uh, good morning, teachers and educators. Welcome you all to webinar eight um, and the second webinar of season two of the professional development or PD webinar series exclusive teachers of English at kindergarten to grade 12 throughout Vietnam using the new textbook series probably brought by the K-12 PD special interest group with the support, consultation and guidance from the board of directors and of secretaries with Association, VTA, and the Regional English Language Office, RELO, U.S. Embassy, Hanoi, Vietnam, as well as the sponsorship from VTA, RELO, British Culture, London, UK, Longman Pearson, Vietnam, I said Cleveland, Hanoi, and talking English. We would like to extend our thanks to all the participants for being interested in registering and arranging your time to attend webinar eight. My name is Nguyen Duc An, a lecturer of Taibak University. I am a member of the PD webinar series. Other information about our group could be found at the provided link. It's all the founding members of the K-12 PD SIG for voluntarily spending your precious time organizing the webinar so far. We would also like to take this opportunity to extend our sincere thanks to the newly joined members who are also willing to voluntarily spend your precious time and effort to organize the upcoming PD webinars and related events to empower teachers, inspire students, and promote English teaching and learning in Vietnam. Joining webinar eight today with me is Ms. Thuy Linh as a secretary. Let me kick off by introducing a little bit about the webinar series. There are four main themes of the series of the PD webinars namely English language teaching or ELT methodologies, using information and communication technologies or ICD in ELT, testing and assessment and PD. In season one, we organize seven webinars, namely teaching integrated skill, online blended learning design and delivery, test design and development, free online learning resources and writing abstracts for conference presentations. In each webinar, there are useful and practical sharing from the featured speakers, university lecturers, and especially inspiring experience from the teachers at primary, secondary, and high school levels um, throughout Vietnam. All the information contents and recordings of these webinars can be found and downloaded from the webinar forum at the VTSO website. That brings me nicely on with the introduction about webinar eight today, entitled Exploring Internet-Based Materials in English Teaching. Our speaker today is Dr. Um, Dr. Nguyễn Ngọc Vũ, the Dean of Faculty of Foreign Languages and Vice President of Hoa Sen University and the Chairman of ASTISO, Association of Vietnam Universities and Colleges. Dr. Vũ has a 12 year of experience building and researching ICT integration into project-based teaching and English language teaching in Vietnam. He is also leading an e-learning team to produce digital contents at Education Quality Training Support Center of Vietnam Association of Universities and Colleges. Thank you so much, Dr. Nguyen Ngoc Vu, for spending your three, uh, precious time preparing the sharing 
and the webinar conference materials. Together with the sharing from Dr. Nguyễn Ngọc Vũ, there's a sharing of three other facilitators, Ms. Nguyễn Thị, um, Nguyễn Thị Dung, Mr. Đỗ Nguyễn Đăng Khoa, and Mr. Lê Nguyễn Như Anh. Many thanks to our speaker and three facilitators for support preparing the webinar for suggesting and um, the pre and post webinar ref, um, reference materials, as well as for the sharing of experience and participating our webinars today. All the participants, please feel free to interact with our speaker and facilitators during the webinars and after the webinars for follow-up activities. After this introduction, Dr. Nguyễn Ngọc Vũ, together with our three facilitators, share his experience related to exploring internet-based materials in English teaching. If the participants have other questions or ideas, feel free, uh, please feel free to type in the chat box our secretary will keep a record of the questions and send them to the speaker and facilitators to address in the Q&A. Finally, there is a brief summary of this webinar and several information on webinar 8. After participating in the two and a half hour webinar, participants may be eligible to receive an electronic certificate. At the end of the session, we will provide a short quiz for participants, uh, participants to uh, verif verify attendance at the webinar. Based on the results of this quiz, participants will receive an email with an electronic certificate. After each live webinar, the sharing materials and recording will be available on the Viet Teacher Association website. On the behalf of the organizers, I would like to thank you everyone again for making this webinar happen. And I wish you all a very productive, interesting and fun workshop. Let's get started with the sharing from Dr. Nguyễn Ngọc Vũ. So please welcome him. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Anne, uh, for the nice introduction. A big good morning to everyone. And uh, the first thing I want to say is, okay, I would like to say thank you to uh, VFT Souls and the sponsors for inviting me to the webinar today. And I would also like to thank you, uh, everybody, for spending time with us um, in this uh, webinar. Now, uh, before I begin further, uh, let's um, very quickly check. Can you all hear me well? If you can hear me, please say yes into the chat window. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, we have got responses from uh, several people. Look like, yeah, everything is perfect. Now, um, I am now talking to you uh, from my home in Ho Chi Minh City. Could you please also type into the chat window your location right now? Um, just type in the province, for example, right now. I am in Ho Chi Minh City. Okay. And how about you, the audience? Okay. Uh, where are you now? Wow, from Kiên Giang, Đà Lạt, Hanoi. Mm, Hà Nội, Đà Nẵng, Biên Hòa, Vĩnh Phúc, Tuyên Quang, Quảng Trị, Quảng Nam, Thái Nguyên, Vũng Tàu. Wow, so nice. Yeah. So, okay, this is the beauty of the internet, right? Uh, it allows us to have an you know, event where people from everywhere can participate uh, simultaneously. Now, um, okay, let me try to get your nose a little bit better. Okay. Um, could you, okay, let me copy this link to you. Uh, tell me uh, which school level okay, are you uh, teaching in now by going to this job on link that I have just shared on the screen is job on me. Well, let me try to put this into the chat window for you. Um,
object. Okay, right here. Yeah. So um, could you tell me, um, yeah, whether you are teaching in primary school, middle school, high school, and I put in orders for people who are teaching in, you know, tertiary education or do, or, okay, some people are teaching in preschool or okay, in, um, the uh, language centers. So let me see. Uh, for example, for me, I'm teaching in, um, yeah. The others. Okay, so we have got um, 20, 30, 40, right. Okay, this um, going up. And half of the participants today are from the other um, school levels. Interesting. And then okay, we also have okay, uh, quite a significant number of participants teaching in high school. That's nice because um, in the materials that we are going to share today, we are going to relate to you know, a textbook in high school that uh, you are currently using. Well, okay, so thank you very much. Let me try to share this. Uh, okay, I guess you can all see the uh, results simultaneously on the screen. Yeah. Thank you. Now, for people who are not in the room now, uh, for people who are watching us uh, via the um, live stream channel, you can also join um, the straw poll um, at the uh, provided link. By the way, straw poll is my favorite tool to interact with participants when I deliver online workshop like this. So uh, next time, if you want to have you know a quick um, you know poll with your participants, this uh, is um, a good tool to look at. Right. Um, so uh, the uh, okay, topic we are going to focus uh, on today is um, exploiting internet-based material in um, teaching English. Uh, let me try to yeah show you okay, on the PowerPoint screen. All right. Yeah, it looks nice. Now, um, so, okay, uh, why do we come up with this topic for the webinar? Um, now, um, as we um, go further into the um, 21st century um, education system, there is more and more emphasis on ICT integration, not only for teachers of English, but also for many other disciplines. And um, that's why um, a few years ago, UNESCO launched the ICT competency framework for teachers. And based on this ICT competency framework, uh, Viet Tissot, um, Viet Corn, actually, okay, um, Vietnamese Association of Computer Assistance Language Learning in Da Nang, also built okay, uh, another framework. Uh, that is dedicated for teachers of English, but um, okay, for the purpose of this webinar, I just want to draw you to the three levels of uh, ICT integrations, um, technology, literacy, knowledge deepening, and knowledge creation. Now, these are the three different levels that um, UNESCO want to see teachers build up their um, ICT competency in um, you know um, understanding raising teachers awareness in curriculum assessment in teaching methodology um, in okay, uh, their ability to use uh, the uh, tools the resources we are going to know uh, several i hope they okay, need new tools okay, in our webinar today too and okay, in the teacher ability to organize um, school work to do um, school administration more efficiently and also um, to have teachers to build their competency via uh, professional learning activities um, like the webinar we are doing today. Okay, 
So um, if you have never okay, heard about the ICT competency framework for teachers, please pay attention to this. Um, it will come back again in the final quiz. So um, in the webinar today, we will try to um, you know, give you more tools and resources that uh, hopefully can serve as the foundation for a, uh, building your, you know, um, different okay, levels of um, understanding and using uh, internet resources and materials um, according to this framework. Now, um, so going to okay, the topic of internet-based material, why do we need this? Um, everybody knows that if you just uh, simply put okay, uh, shut keywords into Google and then boom, you always get thousands, millions of uh, results coming back. And basically it's like, hey, you are here on earth. We need some, you know, uh, guidelines to tell uh, whether some materials, some websites, um, some materials are good or not. Um, some of them are reliable or not. And universities around the world have tried to formulate, you know, uh, you know certain guidelines uh, that have us categorize internet materials. So. To begin with, okay, the qualities of materials on the internet vary greatly, and we need a certain guideline to make sure that we can um, at least categorize contents for our students. We are also relying more and more uh, on the web um, to get uh, teaching resources and learning materials for our students. So um, the skills developed in this area is um, important. And I know um, some schools now even require teachers to develop their blogs, their um, online courses, or even their website. So by knowing some of the criteria that are commonly used now for evaluating internet content, uh, hopefully uh, we also have a guideline to um, build our internet materials to. Um, these are the common criteria that we are going to cover in uh, my uh, first um, presentation. Um, authority, objectivity, accuracy, currency, and um, usability. Uh, now, uh, these five criteria are based on okay, a lot of the, um, the guideline for using internet material from uh, universities uh, that, um, um, that we can find um, from uh, libraries in the US. Um, now, before I explain these five criteria a little bit further, uh, let's um, take a look at this um, website, Dave ESL Cafe. Now, uh, let me try to give you the link uh, via our window. So, here we are. Now, if you search on the internet, um, then uh, you can quickly find it too. It's okay, pretty popular, okay, eslcafe.com. And uh, if you cannot find it, then the link is now in your chat window. Um, hey, never mind. I cannot get to the chat window right now. Um, so some of the facilitator may help me to put a link on 
it's ASL Cafe um, dot com. Yeah. Okay. Now I want you to spend okay just two or three minutes. Okay, looking around. Okay, this website. It has been around the um, TSO community for quite a long time, and this is uh, quite you know a popular okay, TSO website. So, okay, just to give you a little more information, the website was set up around 1995 by a teacher of English called Dave, and he has been uh, consistently uh, working on this website during the last two decades, building communities, building resources, and um, connecting people in our TSO community. Now, let's together try to um, evaluate Day's ESL Cafe using the five criteria that I have just mentioned. Um, to begin with, um, when we look at a website, uh, we okay, want to okay, see the authority, I mean, um, the people behind the website, okay, uh, the people who are responsible for running the site, um, what are their qualifications? Are they qualified to uh, edit, to manage uh, the contents in the website? If the website is set up by an organization, then okay, how okay, reputable is the organization? And um, uh, if you can find information about the uh, okay, authors of the sites or the organization that is behind the website, then uh, by uh, looking at the link itself can also provide us with a lot of information too. So um, the okay, following um, website, I mean web link extensions are okay, usually linked to a reputable affiliation, like if you see a site ending with edu, okay, then probably it's educational institution. That's why most schools and universities in Vietnam okay, will end um, with a, a, a domain okay, extension edu. Um, or, okay, I mean, non-profit organization, com, okay, short for commercial enterprise, um, .NET okay, uh, simply means okay, uh, internet service provider. So okay, uh, if you see a website uh, ending with GOV, then probably it is a okay, um, governmental body. And, and um, is it very difficult to um, get domains ending with GOV? Okay, um, the registration process is very complicated and um, it needs to go through a lot of verification. So if you see a website ending with GOV, then probably okay, it is a government agencies. And most of the time we can trust the contents coming from website ending with this um, extension. Um, we rarely come up with websites uh, ending with uh, M I L or military for short, uh, but okay. This is also similar to GOP uh, in you know the registration process. Individual okay, internet users um, cannot okay, uh, register uh, for these website domain. So uh, okay, to be short, if you see websites ending with um, edu, GOP. MIL in the link, then is it likely that okay, these websites are maintained, run by a reputable um, organization, and we can okay, basically trust the content. Uh, for website ending with okay, .org, .com, or .net, okay, individual users like okay, me, like you, uh, if we have the expertise and we know how to do it, we can okay, very easily uh, buy a, a, a domain name, okay, a web link uh, ending with this thing. 
So uh, the first thing we should learn in judging the internet content, uh, I think, is to tell whether uh, the domain name uh, is Dr. Nguyễn Ngọc Vũ, can you unmute your microphone? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> okay. uh, can you hear me now, everybody? Great, yes. thank you. Yeah. So, um, um, I have just talked about okay, authority and um, when okay, evaluating authority of internet resources, uh, we can look at the web link to decide whether uh, the person or the organization behind uh, those internet contents are um, reputable or not. And uh, on the screen now, you can see a, a simple web link um, with um, a, a, a personal uh, name in in the in the domain, right? Um, usually, okay, when the web link have okay, three or four layers like okay, levels like this. So it has fairprod.demon.co.uk. This means okay, uh, that this is probably a personal okay, web page. And then okay, uh, we need to make sure that we track whether the person running it is uh, trustworthy or not. All right. Um, so, Talking about authority, let's go back to day ESL Cafe. And okay, I want you to give me a rating from one to five okay, um, um, on, on okay, um, the uh, authority of the website. Okay, uh, now, okay, it doesn't need to be you know, okay, exact right now. I just want to know okay, how you okay, evaluate okay, at you know, first. Okay, um, experience with the site. Um, so if you have to give one to five, okay, five mean okay, excellent, okay, and one mean okay, bad, then okay, um, which score okay, would you give to this website in terms of authority? Now, could you please put that into the chat window? Mm. Somehow the chat window is running a little bit slowly, I think, because we are having okay, nearly 80 participants in the room now. Okay. Uh, but I believe, you know, some people are putting in okay, the score. Okay. Uh, for me, okay, personally, um, I know that the website is okay, maintained and run okay, by, uh, up, you know, by, you know, an individual user, you know, by Okay, our teachers and uh, they actually is a well-known uh, English teachers in the TESOL community. And uh, he also has a team okay, of TESOLers to help him um, edit the content on the website. So um, if I need to give a score okay, um, in terms of authority for the site, I would give it four out of five. Not sure whether, you know, your scoring match um, Am I? But okay, it's okay to have some difference. Now, the next thing we should look at is um, whether the website, the content of the site, is trying to persuade. Um, so we are talking about objectivity of the content, right? Um, is the purpose of the site clear? Um, uh, um, does it, you know, touch any uh, intended uh, group of audience and uh, are there criteria for, um, you know, selecting, uh, putting in, posting information on the website? And um, uh, we should also um, see whether the information on the website is mostly factual or is it uh, opinion is it you know primary source or is it just secondary source? All right. Um, now the day VSL cafe, uh, I, I think um, is quite clear in in terms of objectivity because mostly you know it posts uh, 
uh, teaching resources it, it does not share uh, opinions but if you go to newspapers or go to some politics website for example um, then okay, the objective objectivity criteria um, is really important now um, the next thing we look at when evaluating a website is um, the content accuracy uh, when we share an internet link to the student we want to make sure that the information uh, provided on the site is accurate um, uh, it, it, especially the facts and information are uh, uh, well documented and um, a good website should also provide links to okay, other quality web resources. Now, in terms of accuracy, um, we do not need to check okay, whether okay, the okay, information provided okay, on the ESL cafes are okay, correct or not, because mostly they are teaching resources. But one thing I like okay, about Davis Cafe, um, okay, the um, numerous web links to many other good uh, TESOL websites. So uh, if you need okay, uh, teaching resources uh, for uh, your class activities, this is a good start. Uh, it, this website does not only provide you with teaching resources, but also provide you with links where you can go further. And uh, it saves you time instead of okay, uh, going to Google. Now, um, another thing we look at um, is the currency. And by currency, we try to evaluate whether the content on the website is up to date, is the publication date clearly indicated. Um, now, um, the day DSL Cafe, um, you see the user interface is a little bit outdated because it was set up um, quite long ago, nearly. 20 years ago, um, and and you know he he tried to keep you know a user friendly interface for the website, but okay, it's is nothing responsive like the um, modern platform that we see today. However, um, they managed to okay, keep the websites updated okay, every month by uh, posting. Okay, um, information like jobs, um, TESOL conferences, and uh, um, lesson uh, activities, uh, lesson plans. Um, if we do not see contents or information updated on the website um, regularly, then um, there is quite a good chance that okay, um, the website is no longer taken care of and um, you know whether it is a good website is um, a question now um, lastly okay this is a you know technical criteria uh, a good website should also be easy for the user to navigate around and find the um, uh, resources that um, they want to uh, you, uh, because of the time constraint I cannot give you uh, a lot of um, demos and demonstrations of websites that can okay, look bad okay, um, in the criteria we are uh, discussing but um, if okay, it is too difficult for the students to navigate around to find resources then okay probably um, it not work um, sharing the link to your students so um i have just okay very quickly share with you the five common criteria for evaluating um, internet content before we uh, go okay, um, more to the okay, hands-on steps uh, to wrap up okay uh, these are the five key criteria we should look at when evaluating internet resources authority attractivity, accuracy, currency, and okay, whether it is user friendly or not. Now, um, you can... Um... Sorry, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Nguyễn Ngọc Vũ, can you share the screen? 
Oh, okay. My screen is in the sharing mode now. Uh, but it is um, about the ESL Cafe um, website. All right, all right. Uh, thank you. Let me okay, share again. So you are um, sharing the website. Okay. I, I hope that okay, <laughs> you can see my PowerPoint now. Right. Yeah. So um, if you need okay, more information about the criteria that I have just mentioned, um, you can yeah, Google and there are some of the links uh, for you to uh, look at. Now, hands on. Okay, I have um, 30 more minutes to go okay, and try to make the most of it. We are going to um, okay, explore another website to look for resources in order to develop learning activities for Unit 7, Cultural Diversity in uh, the English 10 New Textbook. Uh, for people who are teaching in high school, I'm probably, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you are probably uh, familiar with the uh, content. Um, if you, okay, um, not, then okay, I think the topic is okay, right? Um, so, um, suppose you are about to take, uh, to prepare um, a lesson plan for this unit and um, you need to look for internet resources uh, to support your students and also to help you okay, design learning activities. Um, you can go to the ABSF Cafe, uh, but okay, uh, because the focus of this workshop is to provide you okay, more with, uh, resources, I would like you to visit another website and um, this is also my favorite. Um, this user interface, yeah, looks boring, but believe me, this is a very good website. It has been around in the TSO community for more than 20 years. Okay, since the beginning of the internet, okay, uh, around 1995. All right, so um, could you go to okay, the web link? Now, I don't want to trade my screen too much because okay, that may be a trouble for you. So the, the link is, okay, I T so J, um, so it means Internet Teacher Association of Japan, okay, itsoj.org. Now, um, could you go to this website and uh, click around, okay, the links uh, to uh, familiarize yourself with the uh, website contents. I, uh, I want you to very quickly evaluate this website in terms of okay, authorities, okay, accuracy, currency, and okay, usability. So, um, in terms of uh, authority, and if you go down to the bottom of the page and look at the about us on the okay, home link, you're gonna see an introduction um, about okay, Internet TSO's Association of Japan. Um, website was okay, maintained and run okay, by a um, group of okay, volunteer um, TSOlers um, uh, in, in, in Japan originally, but now they have okay, quite a big community. So in terms of authority, okay, this is, um, um, good website, a lot of um, evaluations uh, give the website five for authority. In terms of um, currency, I'm afraid that the site um, is not doing well because they stopped updating the website um, since 2012 or 2013 in order to move on to a new platform, right? So you can, get, you know, two okay, out of five uh, for this criteria. Um, in terms of okay, usability, um, as I have mentioned earlier, this website, well, in the beginning, okay, it was a great website. Okay? I mean, the way it categorized resources, the way it had um, the user to navigate around, but okay, it modern uh, web evaluation standard, this is not user-friendly. So. 
we can give it three. Now, um, so could you go to the questions um, areas of the website? And let's say um, you need to have some discussion questions or some okay, um, topics for discussion in, in okay, um, um, culture for your students. And um, it's easier for us to start with, you know, at least a question somewhere else. Could you go to okay, IT Soul of Japan and uh, find some questions that um, I have found for okay, uh, the topic here, cultural diversity. Now, if you can find, you know, a useful link, okay, please okay, share that into our chat windows in the website. Um, so if I go to IT Search, right, and go to questions, Um, do you see my um, okay, web browser uh, share on the screen now, everybody? You know, the hard part of okay, doing this online is sometimes you do not know whether the participants are with you or not. Hello? Yeah. Okay, can you see my um, web browser share? On a screen sharing? Good. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So you see, if you go to the questions, then um, you have um, more than 100 topics. Uh, most of okay, them are very popular topics. Uh, and and uh, I'm pretty sure that you will find a lot of them in the book map of um, our English textbooks. Um, now, let's say I want to find some questions for designing okay, learning activities in, in cultures, then I could yeah, scroll down and you see culture, culture shock. And now if I click on culture, these are some okay, uh, suggested okay, discussion questions that you can um, take for okay, warming up your students for okay, um, speaking activities uh, okay, uh, simply for okay, any um, leading activities into speaking, into reading, or into writing, right? Now, um, let's now go to the lesson uh, tab for um, this topic on culture. And if you go to lessons, so let me go back to the home page and go to lessons right here. Okay. What are the interesting things you can in the lesson tabs? Um, you're going to find um, a lot of okay, uh, lesson plans uh, that um, okay, share. And you know, most of them okay, was already edited by the TESOL teams of uh, International TESOL of Japan. And uh, if I want to find something uh, for culture, then I should on web browser. Uh, if you go down here in the culture area, we have about 15 lesson plans. Um, now, so if you want to um, have something to okay, uh, get yourself started okay, in, in, you know, ideas for lesson planning, um, Okay, um, uh, for learning activities, then uh, take a look at okay, this um, area. There are a lot of uh, good lesson plans. Of course, the format of the lesson plan is different from the one we use in our school, but uh, there will be a lot of ideas that we can use. And lastly, as I have said, okay, a good um, TESO internet resource should only be the start. Um, where we can, um, you know, find further uh, resources that are relevant to our needs. And uh, with that, if you go to 
the um, um, links area you're gonna see yeah um, okay not a long list of um, uh, selected okay links um, yeah internet uh, resources for teachers together with uh, good uh, reading materials and there are also resources for students for you to explore too okay um now my time is running out well i cannot I believe how quick time flies um so i have just um try to uh, introduce the five criteria for evaluating internet uh, materials and um, I have to show you two uh, very famous TSO uh, resource websites uh, that I always introduce to my um, uh, master okay, uh, students um, uh, the Davis Sub Cafe and Internet TSOs of Japan Association now, before I okay, um, finish in the first session, there is another tool that I want you to know in order to develop uh, resources. I know um, um, now multimedia resource is okay, the key to you know engaging uh, lesson plan, and um, okay, let's now try okay a very um, powerful tool that has just come about okay, on the internet uh, recently um, it's called lumen five so uh, if i go to lumen five Now, uh, so LumenFi is a very uh, good tool that can help teachers to create video contents or digital stories from the keywords or from okay, a piece of text that you uh, that you put in. Um, let me try to log in first. Now, in order to use it, um, you need to have an account, I guess. Uh, we do not have okay, time to create an account right now. But if you have already got the account, uh, please log in. If not, yeah, try to create one right now. So um, to create uh, um, your own okay, uh, materials, okay, just go to create a video. And let's go back to the um, cultural diversity uh, theme that we are um, looking at. I want to uh, um, uh, create uh, um, videos uh, that, you know, try to um, have um, short sequence of clips um, about the uh, cultural festivals. Okay. Um, let's say, um, um, the uh, okay, um, okay, train the, the Lunar New Year. Okay. And I want okay, a sequence about Christmas. Yeah. Oh, sorry for the spelling. And then um, another sequence about, uh, let's say, uh, okay. Okay, um, Mayday, then, okay, uh, what else can we have? Uh, and um, let's say Easter Day. Right. Now, instead of putting you know, keywords like this, you can have, you know, a piece of text and put the whole text inside this. Um, Lumen is gonna break your text into sentences and then uh, it find the video contents that match the keywords. 
and then um, choose the video format that you want and the um, okay, video style. Um, so I just choose okay, very quickly okay, one um, for the purpose of demonstration only. And yeah, voila. You see, okay, on okay, this side on the screen, okay, on, on the left side, you have a list of keywords. And okay, on the right side, um, Lumen5 scans all videos available on the internet, mostly from YouTube. And uh, okay, very quickly give you okay, uh, uh, you know, the sequence now, you can, you know, increase the length of the video. Let's say I want to have 10 sequence, okay, then I just increase, um, okay, um, the amount of time here for the first line. That's the Lunar New Year. And now Christmas, I want, okay, another 10 seconds. Now, probably if you put in 20 different festivals, um, okay, um, uh, okay, uh, cultural activities here, then um, the sequence time should be shorter. Mayday, I also want to uh, make it longer. And Moon Festival, yeah. Yeah, more time. And it's the day, yeah. Now, so what else can you do? If you are not happy with a certain video sequence, like uh, this one suggested by this one. If you are not happy with that, you can go to the media library. And then, okay, on the library, media library, you see um, there are tons of other okay, things that you can select. So, okay, if I okay, react that to um, the sequence, then boom, I have a new, um, uh, you know, a video sequence. Uh, if you want to uh, remove okay, all of the, uh, Okay, uh, text here, then is it possible to? Okay, simply okay, delete the text, right? Then okay, now you just have the video. Let's say you want to, okay, you do um, a quick warm up and you just want to show okay, the video in order to get students to guess okay, the name of the um, uh, festival. And um, lastly, um, Okay, uh, it allows you to choose a lot of free uh, music, uh, whether you want to have, you know, uh, inspirationals, um, okay, motivationals, uh, okay, moodies, okay, music style, they are all here. Then just select okay, any music style that match your theme. And lastly, publish. Um, well, let's preview it first. Now, so this is what I have just produced very quickly, right? It's one minute. Now, what we see here is okay, actually based on artificial intelligence. Right? So the artificial intelligence is available on the internet and we use okay, a suggestion that Okay, if you're happy with the preview, then okay, uh, just hit publish in order to get the okay, final work. And uh, Lumen5 is very kind, right? It allows you to download the videos, okay, uh, but uh, with the free account, we have um, you know, a low motion. It's enough to show in our class. If you need, a higher resolution video, then you need to upgrade your account with a little pay. So it is try render it is trying to render the video for me to download right now. Okay, um so uh, that's um, how we can uh, 
create, you know, um, digital stories on, you know, our learning projects uh, for students uh, with multimedia content. Um, there are, of course, many other tools. And um, before I um, start my part today, there is okay, another a website that I recommend you to uh, visit. Um, names, okay, very easy to remember. It's called Kuntun for School. Um, Kuntun for School is actually a curation of tools that are useful for teachers. So um, um, the tools here are categorized into things for presentation, things for editing uh, music and audio. Uh, creating um, uh, this uh, was originally a blog and it won the MacLeod um, Technology Innovation Award uh, in 2016. <laughs> Okay. See like a uh, one-stop software and resources that um, teachers in school can use in order to enrich um, the teaching resources. Um, now, um, I think you know I'm going a little bit fast. And, uh, see you face to face in order to you know. I check whether you are with me, but uh, I know okay, the meeting is being recorded. And um, if you miss some part, you can always see our recording later. Um, so to sum up, uh, well, I need to bring you back to this. I have okay, introduced the um, ICT competency framework. Uh, um, on is this part okay uh, for them. Uh, we have very quickly um, uh, get ourselves familiar with the five common criteria for evaluating internet materials authority objectivity accuracy currency usability and I managed uh, to uh, that have been around uh, uh, with the TSO community for a very long time, they ESL Cafe, yeah, and um, Internet TSO Journal of um, Japan. This one. Uh, introduce okay, producing uh, multimedia materials called Lumen Five. Yeah, um, yeah. Try to create an account. Put in a list of keywords. Let's say you teach about cities, then put in London, New York, Paris, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Hanoi, for example. And okay, in just okay, uh, one or two minutes, you have a video um, to work with your students on a topic. Okay, this is really cool. And uh, if you need more resources, uh, yeah, Kuntun for School is my recommendation. Uh, now, ten, and I think okay, the whole presentation now. Okay, the floor is for the facilitators and for the Q and A. Well, thank you very much for your attention, and now over to you, okay, Miss Anne. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Nguyen Ngoc Bo. It's really important to know which website is good or bad uh, for our teaching as well as set for our student based on the five main criteria, including authority, objectivity, uh, accuracy, uh, currency, and uh, usability. Besides, Dr. Vu also shared us uh, about some amazing resources. I find them very useful, practical, and amazing. Thank you very much, Dr. Nguyen Ngoc Vu, for the very uh -huh. interesting sharing. Uh, to all the participants, uh, if you have any other questions or ideas, please feel free to type them in the chat box. 
we our secretary will collect all your questions and send them to our main speaker and the facilitators. So thank you. Now let's move to another interesting sharing from Ms. Uh, Nguyen Thị Dung. Uh, Ms. Dung is currently working as an English teacher at Hanoi Thang Long Secondary School, Hanoi, Vietnam. She already published a book about English in the workplace last year. She is now working on some personal research. She is interested in teacher education, early language education, technology and education, and neuroscientific methodologies. So, Ms. Sung, please start your sharing. Okay. Um... Okay, so I'm gonna try to share my screen. So you guys already look at my screen already, right? Yeah, good. Um, all right, so compared to Ms. Wu, uh, Ms. Wu's sharings, my part is just relating to about some uh, sources that you, resources that you can have a kind of things that you can help with your reading lesson. So normally uh, my students usually find reading uh, lessons boring because the materials and also the contents of the reading text is not really updated and it's not relating to the society. That's why uh, my friends already recommended a kind of resources that um, can help with reading lessons. And it's uh, reduce your time, prepare and search for the sources. So um, let us start with the uh, read works. So uh, it's on the, uh, internet-based materials. So here is the interface of ReadWorks. So normally you can see uh, in the corner of the screen yeah, the website link. So it is uh, readworks.org. All right, so um, when you look at the screen right now, you can see that there are already, uh, you know, log in at the website and you can see the leads here. They're gonna have um, fine content, my leads assignments and process and class of mean. Well, normally well, your students gonna have a, an account, an account so they can uh, access the website. And so why do I choose ReadWorks as my lesson? I mean, reading lessons resources, just because it's uh, widely used by a lot of teachers in the world and it is also a source from Americans. So I think that the language is quite, you know, I mean, it's the most native one right now. And because it's already have um, digital classes and you also can print it the, the handouts and you also can use projector if your school um, is equipped with uh, projector. So you can have three alternative ways of using it. All right. Um, okay. So what, why, why should we have a look at this um, website? First of all, for teachers. So I think that it's a kind of easy way to find sources for students with different level. I mean, I am a teacher from secondary school. So my students are from grade six until grade nine. So with different level, they're gonna have different um, ability of learning English. So for example, with students in grade six, you're gonna choose an easy one, but for grade nine, you're gonna uh, choose a little bit, I mean, maybe B2, or B1 or B2 or A2 levels. And in one specific class, so you can divide into different um, groups. So for example, in grade six, they're gonna have um, 30 students, but about just five of them are very kind of low. So you can make another group in one big class. So they're gonna assign different um, lessons for them, reading text, uh, different reading text for them. And also they're gonna have suggested answers. So it's like um, you don't need to you know, read the whole text and check the you know, answers again. And uh, what about students? So for students, they can have different way of choosing reading the text so they can use the text and also they can use the audios. It's uh, all integrated there. And of course, and they also can find out their own ways of learning. For example, they can use different, you know, different topics. So they, if they are 
into animals. Yeah, they can search for animals. If they can choose, if they like um, kind of the world of countries, they can choose the geography topic or something like that. That's why I think is it's very benefit for us. So first of all, let's talk about finding content. So here you can see on the top of the slide here. Yeah, I already searched for the word animals, for example. Um, so my grade is uh, grade seven. So I choose animal and I put a tick at grade seven and I would love my student to read more about the text by uh, doing the exercise from at the end of the reading text. So I choose animals, grade seven and full question set. So here are the outcome. So you can see here, they can have who speaks to the animals, animal influence, a day at the zoo. So you can see uh, they can already state clearly the words. So you can uh, have a look at it and check it if it's suitable for your student or not. So it is about five contents. Of course, you cannot find any other contents that doesn't have a full question set or doesn't have express. It's up to you. It, it's up to your you know, purposes. Okay, so here is the, the things I already showed you. All right, so um, there's gonna have engine here and you can click to the choices that you want. That's it, easy, right? Um, so for example, I already choose a, a reading text about American native homes. So uh, so this is gonna have a reading text like this and the, the, the next column, it's about the question set. So they're gonna, mostly they're gonna have eight questions including um, maybe around six or seven multiple choice and about two or three answers questions. Like you have to write down the answer. And look at the text here. You can see that it's easy for you to, you know, for student, I mean, to highlight the information that they already find down. For example, you can color it yellow, green, or even you're gonna have command, like you're gonna take notes there. Yes, and also it's easy to find out the answer, right? Okay, so what about the new words here? Um, what are I most impressed by here? It's um, I don't need to, I mean, my student don't need to search for um, the dictionary because they already integrated the dictionary here. For example, I got the word traditional or tribes. So normally you just need to click to the highlighted words here. So it's come out with the definition. So yes, I think it's, um, I mean, the most, you know, convenient ways because the translation, I mean, the definitions also in English, that's why they have to try to understand instead of telling the Vietnamese word, this is not my way, okay? So yeah, you, you have to use like English, English dictionary. So yeah, that is um, one more thing that I would like to show. And so um, like I already said, mentioned before, so in, inside a class, for example, it's 782 right now. So you can see that in even in one class, I already divided into two class. So it's you name it yourself, okay? So I name um, the first group a developing group and the second one is advanced group. So you can see that I assign, as, assign different reading texts to them for the easy, I mean, for a lower level, I use uh, the first grade only, uh, Ameri Native American homes and for better class, I mean, for better group, I um, use Native Americans, traditional Native American homes. So it is for the third grade and it has 240 words. Okay, so it's a little bit longer and the text is a little bit, um, you know, harder to understand. Um, so what else about this uh, website? So normally when you already have the, the classes, you have the groups. Or, so um, how can you, you know, evaluate your student abilities after using this website? So normally they're gonna have a separate part called pro progress evaluation. So when you look at the, progress evaluation here. So you can see that how many students already do have already did your homework? How many of them um, answer the question correctly? Or how many percent of them need to do the part A, part two, part B, or something like that? So you can look at the statistics here and you can see that how good they are and how improved they will be. Okay, so this is a little bit closer look at the 
assignments and progress. I mean, yeah. So they're going to divide into different questions. Like here, I have um, comprehension questions, so skill and strategy questions, vocab activities, and pair text questions or Oracle A day. So normally, it's based on your purpose. So you can choose different kind of questions. So my purpose is just let my student understand the text. So I use most of the time is comprehension questions. So if you want your student to know or to be more challenging, you can choose skill or strategies question. So um, one more thing that I would like you to remember, it's uh, when you log in, so you have to log in by teacher's account, I mean, your, your Gmail or your mail, um, but for students, they just need to click to student login only. They don't need to have a Gmail. That's also why it's easy for some of the students who doesn't have any ideas of what is mail. So yep, students just need to click um, to student login and they're gonna have the account and the password, that's it. So anyways, they can do on the iPad or even phone or a, a course PC. So it's kind of easy for you to control and evaluate your student. And it's also reduce your time searching for the text or kind of make questions for the students. So I hope that this uh, website is gonna be a great source for you teaching, you know, reading text. So I think that's enough about my part. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zhong, our facilitator, for your very useful and practical sharing about ReadWorks with a lot of interesting readings uh, of different levels and uh, ready-made handouts. Um, I think all the teachers who have used read words find it really helpful in their teaching. So thank you so much, Ms. Zhong, again, for your, your great sharing. And I can see in the test book, a lot of teachers um, find uh, read words um, helpful and practical in their um, teaching. Um, so to all the participants, I uh, if you have any um, um, the questions or the ideas, please feel free to type them in the chat box. I can see, um, uh, I, I guess uh, a lot of you have the question, but uh, 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 if, uh, please uh, type in the chat box so that our secretary will collect and we, um, our speaker and the facilitators will answer in the Q&A part. So let me continue with the webinar uh, with the sharing uh, from Mr. Đỗ Nguyễn Đăng Khoa, um, a lecturer at the National College of Education. Mr. Khoa is the Vice Academic Manager at IELTS Big Talk. He has also been a frequent presenter at teacher conference um, in the Indochina regions, including Big in 2018, Camp in 2019, and Lao in 2020. He had just received Hornby scholarship, which covers his upcoming MA study at Gawick University in 2021. His thematic areas of interest include computer assisted language learning, CIWL, academic writing, professional development, IELTS, material development, and curriculum development. So please welcome Mr. Hua. Hello everyone. Can you hear me? Hello? All right. So, uh, okay, so thank you for putting a yes. Uh, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Uh, uh, before starting anything, I'd like to say thank you to Dr. Wu and Ms. Jung for a very, you know, informative and interesting uh, uh, tones and sources. I've learned a lot. I have just like tried it myself like a couple minutes ago. And I think after all of the uh, presentations, I think all of you may somehow accumulated around nearly 10 different tones for actually uh, applying it into your teaching context. 
Now, um, in my section, I'm going to introduce class tones for ESL. It means that you can actually use it in, in your class. OK, so this is like the summaries of all of the tones that I'm going to talk about. So we have a total of four tones. If you know around like one or two of them, please type in the numbers of the tones that you have heard about or Four. So, <clears throat> two. No. <laughs> so that's, that is a no here. It means that you actually uh, haven't uh, got yourself familiarized with uh, the tones here. Yeah, I hope that there shouldn't be too many four. If there are four, I actually, I don't have any more things to say in the, in the presentation. Two, three, great. Okay, so now let me first just introduce the the first tone. Uh, Quizlet is like a very popular tone. It has gained increasing popularity in recent years. And I think uh, among those tones that you have already been familiar with, Quizlet should be one of those. And it is a very interesting and interactive way of giving in-class vocabulary revision. You can actually use it as a quick alternative to PowerPoint when it comes to some uh, ty tiring days when you are too lazy to you know, actually make a vocabulary PowerPoint. And it can also provide students with a vast array of self-study features. I'm gonna make a quick demo on how we can do and what we can also do with Quizlet. Okay, so on the screen, you can actually see a snapshot of a textbook, um, you know, grade 10 textbook. And there are a lot of uh, interesting words here. And if you type in Quizlet, you can actually see the interface like this. I'm going to share the, the screen for the uh, use of Quizlet. Okay. So now this is like the interface of Quizlet that you can actually interact with when you log into the site. Uh, here in the uh, right, here we can see the, 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 the button create. When you click on it, you click on set and there should be a create a new study set feature for you. You can type in the name, for example, it should be unit one, home life. And there should be some description, which is optional. You can actually write some description like, uh, um, it is like for my K-10 students or something. And okay, so behind, sorry, below that, there should be a set of different terms and definitions for you to actually tighten. Uh, for example, here we have the word, um, let me see, chore, you're gonna type it here in as chore. And one of the wonderful thing of Quizlet is that you don't actually have to type in the definition. It will do the work for you, see? Uh, but before that, you can choose the language, for example, English. When you click on it, the definition will automatically sh show up. So it saves a lot of times when you prepare materials. Okay. Uh, for example, I'm gonna do another word. I'm gonna do another word like um, breadwinner, I believe. So when you switch back to the definition, it will automatic, automatically show up again. And if you want some spice into your vocabulary flashcard, you can actually click on image and there will be some image illustrating the words. Uh, if you use the free version of Quizlet, the limit uh, storage should be a little bit limited, but I think that is more than enough for our teaching every day. But if you upgrade it into the premium account, I think there should be more images to that. You can upload your own image as well. Okay, for example, this is a very uh, 
cute and fitting image for breadwinner, right? Okay, so after you finish uh, uploading all of the vocab and typing all of the words that you have prepared for the lesson, you can click on create here and automatically the card is already here for you at your disposal. You don't have to actually spend a lot of time for that. Uh, for around 10 words, I spent only around for five minutes. So uh, it is like a very brilliant tool for busy teachers, right? And uh, in addition, you can actually get your student engaged in a very interesting game. We call it Quizlet, Quizlet Live. And obviously, I think because of the time limit, I cannot actually get you to actually play the game right now, but I'm gonna show you the video of my student playing the game. Uh, Okay, so I think I'm gonna share the computer sounds. Okay. Can, can you see the uh, slides? Can you see the video? Yes, yes, we can see yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna play it. So if the, the sounds happen to be too loud for you, please ask me and I'm gonna somehow like adjust it into a more um, acceptable volume. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for my, uh, you know, evil smile, evil laugh at the end of the uh, uh, video. Um, yeah, what I really like about the game is that you actually don't have to spend time making it like Kahoot or other games. When you finish uh, doing the flashcards, the game is already with you when you click on Quizlet Live here. Let me see, okay. When you click on it, the game is already there for you as they use the database of the vocabulary set that you created previously. So, um, and another good thing about Quizlet Live is that it have music. You know, most of the time we fail with PowerPoint games is the fact that uh, we don't have sounds to integrate into the, the gaming environment. So I think music is a really important feature that many, many games like Quizlet or Kahoot have that PowerPoint uh, designed games failed to have. So we always face the mis miseries of doing, spending like hours of making PowerPoint games, but in uh, actual, in reality, students did not really enjoy it as much as we wanted them to be. So I think that is all about Quizlet. And now, next is a very, uh, another interesting set of tones. We call classtones.net. And in this website, you are provided with a very huge amount of different uh, class tones. For example, one of my favorites should be the random name pickers. See, you can see a lot of class tones. I myself haven't tried all of them, but my favorite one should be the class, the random name picker. I'm gonna click on it. Okay, so for this tone, you can actually type in the student's name. For example, we have a set of names here and I'm gonna do a demonstration of copy and pasting my student's name from a Excel file. I would, I would like to apologize for any of the students who happen to be in the list here. Uh, okay, so when you paste your student's name on the space here, click on submit, and you will see a wheel with all of the names inside. Uh, this is a very good tool for, for you to actually ask your students to do a quick revision of the previous lessons. And this can be also a very interesting, interesting tools for you to somehow ask one of the students to answer one of the questions. Okay, 
So uh, if the student has already been called, you can actually remove the name and the the wheels or somehow omit that name up, uh, off the, 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 the list that we are having here. And there are a lot of different, more interesting tools for you to discover if you have enough time to actually um, try it out all of the tools. We have fake, fake book, which is like um, another version of Facebook when students can post in their storytelling uh, sections. And if you don't want your student to use Facebook, you can actually use uh, one of the uh, uh, sites here. Okay, now let's move on to the uh, next tools. Uh, the final tool, I think that should be the final tool uh, that I would like to demonstrate is the class dojo. Uh, unlike the previous tones when you can actually create vocabulary or do some, uh, you know, class activity, class dojo is a class management tool. And I'm going to show you a uh, brief demo right now. Okay, so this is like the interface to class dojo you are supposed to have a, one account, one teacher account. I am using the free version and I'm completely pleased with it, with all of the features that are provided. So on the screen, you can see it is, those are my uh, classes, my former classes. I'm gonna click on the demo class here. If you type in the student's name, you can see that there should be some uh, student uh, symbols um, and for the student that can for the student that do well in one of your lessons you can click on it give them one bonus for that and if the student failed to do something that you expect them to for example they talk a lot in class or they fail to do your homework you can click on the negative or the neat word sorry there's no word for negativity here and you can click on that to reduce the score that you already give them. Uh, one of the good thing about this is the fact that it can actually uh, help you to check attendance. For example, uh, during the class of 20 students, you can actually uh, click on this uh, blue, uh, sorry, green and red button to check whether they are going to class on time, they are present or they are absent. And all of the scores and the attendance will be recorded in the website so that you can actually uh, see the overall um, um, statistics of what you have been going throughout the semester. So I think it is like a very great alternative to paper and pen, handwriting, attendance checking that we have been doing for a little while. So uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, if you want to actually uh, discover all of the tones, all of the features of the Glassdoor show, you should spend like around uh, 20 minutes because uh, some of the uh, good features are already available that I don't have enough time to talk to you, like the stopwatch, countdown, or it can also give you the right to call a random student in class. See? Okay. And um, I think for the final part, the uh, poll everyone, a lot of people have used it before, and it is kind of taking time for us to actually get ourselves involved in the making of a pawn, everyone. Uh, Dr. Vos, a straw pawn is, I think, a better alternative. So I'm going to give you the right to know more about that uh, in Google. OK, so I think that should be the end of my uh, um, introductions and presentation. And I'm going to give back the screen to our uh, host. Thank you. All right. Oh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Dangkwa, for your sharing. Um, the websites that you have suggested to us, including 
uh, Quizly class uh, tools or class dojo um, really helpful in our English teaching and learning. And I can see uh, some teachers um, in the in Zooms um, have uh, talked about the benefits and their interest in using Quizly. Uh, and they said that um, their students love using Quizlet a lot. Um, and Quizlet is very common uh, to many ELT teachers. And I also find it useful for my students. Class tools and Class Jojo are very helpful, interesting, engaging with different types of engaging and interactive activities. And I'm sure that the students love them very much. Uh, so thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Hua, again, for your great sharing. To all the participants, if you have any questions or ideas, please feel free to type them in the chat box, and our secretary will collect uh, all your questions and send to our main speaker and the facilitators. Um, so the last sharing is from Mr. Lê Nguyễn Như Anh who is currently a lecturer of uh, English department, Ho Chi Minh City University of Education. He got his MA in Applied Linguistics from Curtin University. He has been presenting at various international and domestic teacher conf conferences, conventions, and seminars. His research interests include instructional design, linguistics and technology enhanced language teaching. He has been a teacher trainer in programs related to the national foreign language project, covering different areas such as language enhancement, language assessment, ICD in language teaching. He is an advocate of the use of technology in language teaching and is currently tasked with the many ICT projects of English department, including the department's website, the learning management system, and the short course technology in language teaching. So please welcome Mr. Lei Nguyen Yu Anh. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. An, for the uh, introduction. And uh, it's great to be here with all of you today. Um, I was informed I only have 10 minutes, so I would like to introduce you just one tool. And uh, it just so happened that I, I just read the, the, the message sent by the participants and uh, one of you asked that, uh, is there a, a website to have students uh, practice listening? So my, uh, the tools I'm going to present to you is can, can, can be um, sort of a solution. Uh, can, can you see my, my slide, my sharing? Can you see my sharing? Sorry. Yeah, yes. Okay, right. Okay, um, so in this part, I will talk about a tool, it's called the ESL video uh, without the S, uh, this is the name of the website. And this website allow you to create like um, uh, quizzes with uh, videos from YouTube videos. The uh, registration is very simple. You go to the website, you click on sign up, and then fill in your information, and then you are a teacher. For the students, they don't need to have a web, an account to do the activities. Uh, there's no need for students to register. They just use the, um, the link of the exercise you provide them. Um, so when you log in, I uh, click on create and there is a screen like this where you have to fill in certain information like the, um, the code of the, the YouTube video. Uh, for example here, I choose an activity in the uh, Tiếng Anh Mười textbook, uh, unit one, activity two is one. And I make it into a YouTube video uh, with simple tools like 
uh, movie maker so yeah okay and then you uh, I make it and I upload, upload it to a YouTube um, to, to the YouTube to make it a, a YouTube video and then I get a link the embed uh, link like this and paste it in the uh, quiz maker interface uh, with information like this right so you get the code all you need to do is just find the code and then copy and paste it in the area and then click continue and uh, after that you create the question the, the questions just like uh, the sample I showed on the screen here. Uh, this is the original activity in the book. And uh, after you finish creating the, what the, the questions, you uh, the, the website create an online listening activity for you. You can see the real activities here. Uh, let me show you the uh, how it look on the website. Okay, so this is what the activity look on the website. Uh, so the student just play the video and they listen to the video. And then they uh, click on the answer choice here. Right. Uh, just click on several one and then see how you did. And they get the result right away. Uh, you can also create a class in ESL video so that the student can uh, send you, send a teacher the uh, score. Okay. Um, and the website also allow you to like download all the, the question in the form of a PDF file. Um, so it's very convenient. Uh, this is what the PDF file look like, okay? So you, if you don't have the internet, you can also like download a paper-based version of the test for the activity. Um, you can also, if, if the student, uh, like if you don't have the computer, but um, somehow you have a mobile device, then the student can use QR code here to access the activity and then do it online. Um, right, so, uh, what I want to share is this is a very fast and convenient tools for you to create online listening activities. Uh, beside uh, create the activity, you can also like you can also share um, use the activities created by other teachers, just go to the home page of the website and you'll see plenty of other activities categorized according to levels like beginning, uh, low intermediate, intermediate and high intermediate. Uh, they have a lot of kind of um, activities beside multiple choice. They also have gap filling and the like. Um, so it's a great tool for you to explore and it's very fast to write a tool. So the two simple test step is to find a YouTube video, get a code, and then paste it in the ESL uh, video website and add questions and you have another activities. And it's completely free. Uh, there's no charge, no fee, no monthly fee, no yearly fee. Uh, all you need to do is to register a teacher account. So I think that's all for my part. If you have any questions, um, I will gladly answer. Thank you. Yeah, okay, wait. So Mr. Uh, Nguyen, can you stop the sharing so that I can share my screen? Yeah, yeah sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Nguyen, for the last but very interesting sharing. 
Um, we don't have to spend much time designing the activities. And I think that the student love learning by watching videos. So thank you again for your great sharing. Uh, so we have listened to the sharing from our main speaker and three facilitators. Now it's time for the Q&A from our participants today. Thank you so much for listening and watching the webinar attentively and sending us the very interesting question. So here uh, from our secretary, um, we have some question. The first one is from um, maybe Miss uh, Huang Hien um, to Miss uh, Nguyen Thị Dung, our facilitator. The question is, can I change from student account to student account? Okay, um, so, okay, let me share the screens and I'm going to show you a little bit detail. All right. Um, so here is the slide, um, and we know it's not, okay, where it is, okay. Here. Um, so this is the, the interface that I already locked in. Um, so if you want, to change your student's account into teacher's account, you cannot do it. But um, for example here, um, so this is the first time when you access readworks.org. So when you log in, you're gonna be the teacher. So remember you have to, if you are teachers, you have to click at the bottom log in, okay? And then if you want to give it to your students, so your student don't need a Gmail or don't need mail, so they just need to click at student login. For example, here they're gonna enter class code because when you create a class, so um, you're gonna have the class code and they're gonna enter the class code and continue and they're gonna find out the name, for example, here. Okay, and then they're gonna fill the this password, they're going to change their own password. So my answer is, sorry, but you cannot change the student account to teacher's account. That's it. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Zoom, for your answer. Uh, so please move to another question from uh, maybe Mr. Chuang. Um, when we apply technology in teaching tasks, how can we engage learners to be more active in the sessions? So with this question, I would like to, um, <clears throat> um, our main speakers, um, Dr. Nguyen Ngoc Vũ. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chung, um, for the very good question. Um, I, I think, um, to begin with, um, we need to keep in mind that um, all the technology tools, um, okay, uh, merely tools, okay. So technology should be the medium or the platform to support teacher and student to um, interact uh, more efficiently. Uh, we should not, um, you know, use technology uh, with, with the belief that, you know, it will help us to train the methodology and bring magic into the classroom. So um, uh, to begin with, I think as language teachers, um, we uh, need to think carefully about okay, uh, the uh, design okay, of the learning activities um, before um, integrate uh, technology. And um, if you, you know, really want to look at the technology part, then okay, I have some suggestions. Um, first, um, try to know a lot of different tools because each time you use a new tool with your students, that creates the novelty effect, right? Um, it, it's natural. All of us are engaged uh, with something new. Right. Um, so, for example, um, for uh, creating quiz or uh, poll, interactive poll with your student, uh, you can use a uh, straw poll, or you can use the the, okay, the poll tool not quite introduced, or some other okay, uh, you know tool. Um, so, by you know diversifying the tools, by 
okay, equipping ourselves uh, with a lot of okay, different tools. I think um, it's a very good way to uh, engage your students. That's the, the novelty effect that we talk about in psychology. And secondly, um, try to uh, learn the okay, interactive tool, especially tools that have um, students to interact with you, tool that have students interact with each other. And lastly, when we use technology, okay, it's just like you know in traditional regular learning activities, if um, students have chances to work with each other, you see, okay, um, automatically it will become more student-centered, and the student talking time gonna increase. And we will also see okay, uh, a okay, strong boost in the um, student-to-student -student interaction too. So to sum up, technology is just the platform or the medium, and um, it's very much up to okay, the skills, uh, the experience of the teachers um, to have you know a good learning activity with technology integrated. And my advice is to um, learn okay, a lot of new tools and um, try to use uh, group work, try to think about how you can organize okay, collaborative learning activity, group work uh, when you use technology. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Nguyễn Ngọc Vũ for your um, advice and suggestions. Um, so uh, our three facilitators, do you want to add something or do you want to share some of your experience about this? Um, so uh, one of the participants like asked me uh, um, as a question that how do we make a movie so we can upload to user from the textbook. My solution is that you need a movie maker like, like the, the movie maker that I use here. Um, so um, can, can I share the, the screen uh, for, for a minute uh, to demonstrate it? So basically what I do is I add a picture in this movie maker and then I add an audio and make sure that the length of the picture and the audio are the same. And then we make, um, we save the movie, then we upload it to YouTube. So the process is very simple. You need a software that allow you to include both a picture and an audio so that you can make it into a movie and then you can upload it to YouTube. And then you can use the SL video for your listening activities. Uh, yeah, that's all. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Le Nhu Anh uh, for your sharing. Yeah. Um, I can see in the chat box um, some question from the teacher and I would like to invite uh, Ms. Uh, Nguyễn Thanh Bình from Bắc uh, she have the question for Dr. Nguyễn Ngọc Vũ about this EF, uh, ESL Cafe. So, Ms. Bing, can you unmute your microphone and raise your question? Ms. Bing. Miss Ming, are you there? Okay, I think uh, yeah, I have already got the questions via the okay, chat window. Okay, so thank um, you very much for very yeah, useful sharing. They, they, yeah, has a lot of um, you know readings for teachers. Um, you see, Davis Cafe is mainly for teachers, so um, it provides you with a lot of um, uh, professional development material. Uh, however, you know, if you look closely, you will also see an area called okay, TISO links. And if you follow those TISO links, it will lead you to uh, many other places that you can find um, the learning activities um, that match your needs. Um, and, and, you know, after show you the ESL Cafe website, I also um, invited you guys to uh, take a look at um, the e
uh, for Association of Japan uh, stuff. You see, when you come in there, um, there are a lot of um, like um, jokes you can tell in the class, uh, ready to make lesson plans, um, ESL pitches uh, that are categorized into the level of the students. And just like ESL, uh, they ESL Cafe, they also have the TISO links. And yeah, if you okay, want to look for more resources, please start from there. Okay, I hope that answers the questions. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for the answer. Yeah, okay. So thank you, Miss uh, Bing and uh, Dr. Nguyễn Ngọc Vũ for your answer. Um, let's move uh, to another question. Um, this one, the question by Miss Nguyễn Nhung. Uh, is there any tools uh, to help teachers assess students' writing skills or at least help teachers organize or conduct a writing activity? Um, thank you very much for the very interesting question. I think it is also the concern of many teachers uh, about teaching writing. So with this question, I would like to invite Mr. Hua I was waiting for that um, yeah. because, you know, uh, one of the class tones that I uh, show you, and I'm also teaching writing a lot, so I'm going to share the screen. Uh, one of the class tone in the class tones.net provides you with a very interesting tone of I say. Um, can you see that? Okay, I'm, I'm going to uh, back it a little bit. Class tones.net. So I say it's a very, uh, you know, to good tune for you to actually analyze the students in a very visual manner. For example, when you copy and paste your student essay into the tool, it will automatically analyze all of the long, medium and short sentences, the linkers, the linking words and many other words from your student's essay. and. If you take a look at this, for example, the yellow indicates the medium sentences. And this student is a very good one who managed to get all of the medium sentences in length when they write an essay. So I think it is one of the good things for you to give some general ideas of the students. And you can actually show this, share this on the screen for the students to actually take a look at your, uh, their, their, their work. And, um, you know, for more details, I think uh, virtual writing tutor is like my number one favorite because it is free. It has similar functions to Grammarly, if you know Grammarly. And it has the IELTS section where you can actually have your IELTS writing essay marked for free. For example, um, if you click on writing, there should be a lot of writing task question here, click on one of those and you will see that there should be a topic. Type your question, type your answers here and click on sub, click on finish. You will have your results automatically shows on the screen. I mean, it's to complete the essay right now. So I'm gonna paste, paste a random essay here. Okay. finished and you see that uh, this essay is ranked a uh, 5.3 uh, or something because obviously it is an off topic one i'm not pasting the correct uh, response to the question but you can actually say all of the uh, and a uh, good analysis for you to as a reference if you do not have a teacher or if you self study for the ielts Okay, so I think uh, those tools are very efficient and I hope that my answers somehow help with your uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hua, for your um, suggestion. Uh, I do think that your suggestions are really helpful to the teachers in teaching writing. Um, so I would like to ask um, the participant uh, do you have any um, great, I, I think that you, all of you have many great ideas uh, to share. 
So can you share something that you have done with your student uh, when you teach writing? So maybe a bit later. Uh, to all the participants, please stay with us um, because at the end of the webinar, there will be a quiz to ver verify your attendance and to grant you a certificate of attendance. Thank you. So let's continue with some other question. Um, here, um, let's continue with um, the writing skill. Um, the question from maybe Miss uh, Witten here. Um, is there any tool to help teachers to correct students writing in class? So with this question, I would like to invite um, Mr. Lê Nguyễn Như Anh. Can you share something? Yeah. I no, our tools, but like it was a very long time ago, it was introduced by one of my colleagues. So I'm scrolling through his Facebook to find information. In the meantime, I hope that the other teachers can uh, share with us. Wait for me a little bit. Yeah. And how about um, Dr. Vu? Okay. Um, I think I have okay, um, several tools um, that can help you out with this. Um, well, let me share my screen first. Um, right. Now, um, to begin with, um, you should check out this uh, website called the Writing Den. Um, it uh, gives you a lot of resources for teaching writing, um, like uh, suggestions uh, for, um, you know, writing essays and uh, um, the uh, okay, teacher guides for teaching writing and the different uh, writing genres um, that uh, can be useful for the students. So um, this is not actually Okay, what you look for uh, in, in you know helping you to correct the student work, but um, it can be you know uh, good resources to uh, guide your student during um, your uh, writing lessons. If you do need a tool for correcting student work, then I uh, recommend you to try uh, this one. It's called Acre. Um, this is actually commercial, but it allows you to have some you know. Uh, like two weeks trial and uh, ACRI is based on artificial intelligence in that uh, you see um, you put in uh, the uh, uh, writing topic and the students submit okay, their writing via ACRI then the student gonna get feedback okay the, the, the important thing is okay they get suggestions like um, how to improve the topic sentence how to improve uh, coherence, uh, coherence um, in the writing. And of course, there will be um, spelling grammar support together with um, uh, suggested materials that can help uh, students improve the writing. Um, if you uh, okay, want to get the uh, um, uh, professional account it costs i think about 20 dollars a year another uh, tool that i uh, really enjoy uh, using uh, and, and quite has already mentioned this is um, uh, grammarly um, so i use this a lot uh, to track my writing um, when i uh, develop uh, journals articles like this Right. Um, I have Grammarly integrated into uh, my uh, uh, work and uh, okay, as you can see, okay, it's tracking my writing right now, and then it shows me um, okay, where things can be improved in terms of spelling. Um, right. Um, yeah. So if I see like this, then okay, it um, correct the spelling for me. And um, it also shows me okay, uh, where things can 
the improve in punctuations. Um, and um, if I switch to clarity, um, it uh, gave me suggestions. And of course, you know, these are just machine um, uh, correction and suggestions. So, um, okay, we need to revise that and, and um, decide for ourselves whether we uh, take the advice. And um, yeah, um, it also uh, give us suggestions for okay, the vocabulary that we use. For example, you see, um, it suggests okay, um, alternative nouns, adjectives that we can use to uh, improve the writing. Um, like okay, in the formal, instead of study, the investigation, it's like, it say, yeah, in this okay, article, I use study okay, too often. Okay, and okay, try to see something else, then okay, it um, uh, helped me to do uh, the improvement. Lastly, um, there's another thing that you should check out. Um, um, the tool is called Plot Generator. And uh, with Plot Generator, it allows your student to write uh, Okay, um, stories, um, emails, essays, love letters, and uh, even poems. Um, lots of you know writing jams are available as you can see on my screen now. Um, so, okay, all that you require from the students is to um, uh, put in um, you know the prompts or the keywords. Like, okay, what do you want the conflict to be like? Is it emotional, violent? Okay, the ending is sad or happy. Okay, and then uh, the time in the, you know, in, in, in the answer on, okay, just click on the suggestions like this, 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 and this, right? Uh, because of the time constraint, I just click on, okay, uh, fill, okay, with all the random idea. And then you see, Okay, um, I have just created, um, you know, writing piece. And um, now, so this is not actually okay, the student writing, but it gives the student a writing model and that can be customized. And, um, you know, from time to time, you can do this at, you know, reading material okay, for student. And this is especially useful if you are trying to give the students, okay, a model for some difficult writing piece like writing okay a love letter writing an invitation letter uh, writing an email yeah so uh, okay so those are some of the tools that uh, i think um, you can look at and hopefully um you find them helpful thank you yeah, I, I just, uh, thank you, Dr. Wu. Uh, I just found uh, the website suggested by my colleague. So I'm going to share the screen with you. Um, it's a very convenient website for may probably beginner or intermediate as they advertise, but anyway, it's free. And it's called Write and Improve. You go to the website, uh, you click on like start practicing it. And, and here you can see that they have uh, for beginner, intermediate, you even have like the sections for IELTS writing, both academics and general training. What I like about this website is that they give you uh, tasks and activities, and the computers also help you analyze the writing styles and the vocabulary. So it's suitable for beginner and probably pre intermediate levels because for advanced level, it may be hard for the, the computer to know how to correct you. Uh, but um, for Stata, it's, it's a very useful website. So uh, that's for my part. Thank you. Thank you, um, Dr. Vũ and uh, Mr. Như Anh. Uh, so the two other facilitators and uh, participants, do you have anything to share with the uh, all the teachers and educators here. Do you want to add something? Actually, I have a question. <clears throat> yeah. Recently, I I have to uh, to do my to do a um, I have to assess and writing uh, 
of an assess students writing uh, performance level. I mean, I need to 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 organize some activities for them, um, some activities for them to uh, to do the right um, to do the writing task. But it, it's still difficult for me to uh, to arrange um, the the sequence of activities. So, can you give me some advice or some example um, example of activity I can apply for my lesson? Yeah, thank you, Miss uh, Nguyen Nhung, for your question. So, our speaker and facilitators, do you okay. want to say something? I think um, this uh, seems like uh, it doesn't have much to do with the technology part. Um, you are having difficulty with um, the resources for planning your writing lesson. And okay, in this case, uh, my suggestion is, um, you know, uh, go to some of the website that we have introduced and try to find some simple writing to show to your students. Um, you know, that is a, a, a good start for them. And, um, you know, um, the, the suggestions that okay, uh, met your need um, should go with the okay, specific writing styles, uh, with the level of the students. So, uh, uh, in order to find things that you need, um, probably you need to spend time browsing through the okay, links, especially those okay, resources uh, for teaching writing in uh, the Internet Tea Show of Japan Association, for example. Um, it, it will take you some time, but uh, I'm pretty sure you will find stuff that can be useful. And um, Again, this is not really about okay, the tools, okay? it's, it's about the resources and uh, it takes time to find okay, the right resources okay, for our specific context. Yeah, thank you, um, Dr. Nguyen Ngọc Phu. And please, all the participants, with all the websites that um, the speaker and our facilitators presented in this webinar has been posted on um, Facebook uh, and uh, we will collect all the websites and we will send you later. Thank you so much. And how about the other facilitators or the teachers? Do you, do you have any uh, ideas to share? Yeah. To add in one of the very nice and official uh, regarding the question about writing a lesson planning, I think you may want to take advantage of uh, Cambridge uh, practice make perfect. Uh, this is a very uh, good and official, obviously, because it is from Cambridge and they pro provide a lot of free lesson plan from, uh, you know, speaking, writing from various level. If you want to teach a B1, you know, a PET or IELTS, they give you the free lesson plans for that. For example, I'm gonna show you one of the, uh, one of the lesson plan that I downloaded from uh, that site. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna download it, download it right now. Or lesson plan. For example, if you want to teach uh, a a two key for score, or if you want to teach IELTS, for example, I'm gonna set for one IELTS lesson. Okay, so because of the time limit, I uh, I somehow I failed to navigate through the site, but I'm gonna show you a sample. See, it is like one of the activity that is proposed by Cambridge English based on their course books. So uh, if you take a look at one of the Cambridge uh, English books and you don't know what to do with it, they will give you the lesson plan for it. Obviously that is not um, available for all of the, the Cambridge English book, but I think that may be a good start for you to give you some ideas of how you, to, how you can design some of the activities in writing and in many other schools as well. I'm gonna type in the uh, link for you. Practice, make perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mr. Khoa for your um, sharing. Uh, 
Yeah, I can see in the chat box, there's a lot of questions from our uh, teacher participants. And now I would like to invite um, Ms. Phuong Chuk. Um, she has a very interesting question. And I think that that is also the concern of many teachers. So Ms. Phuong Chuk, can you unmute your microphone and raise your question? Mr. Phương Chuk or maybe Ms. Chuk Phương. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, maybe we wait for uh while we're waiting for Ms. Phương Chuk, maybe I would I would like to invite Ms. Um Hien Ho. She has um maybe she has something to share or Maybe it's a question to ask uh, our speaker or the facilitators. So please welcome Ms. Uh, Yin Ho. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. It's great, it's great for me to, to have a chance to participate in this informative uh, webinar today. I have been enjoying the, the sharings uh, of Dr. Vu, uh, who is my idol. And, uh, and from uh, the other presenters, um, Mr. Nguyen, uh, I've met you in one course in your university. Well, actually, um, to be, uh, I am a big fan of um, integrating ICT tools in teaching. I, I always desire to look for new methods, new tools, combining with uh, pedagogical methods to innovate my classes every single day. And um, from my experience, I have been using some of the, the tools that you have been sharing today. But uh, honestly, I've, I've learned a lot of new things, new techniques and new tools from the great uh, presenters today. So um, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate uh, this great webinar and really look forward to, uh, to welcome the next uh, webinars in the future of Viet Tiso. Thank you for giving me a chance to speak my voice. Thank you, Hien, for the feedback. I thought I should read a question. Thank you, Ms. Hien Ho. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, all the questions and all your sharings. I can see there's a, a, a lot of um, questions uh, in the test box. And we will uh, collect all the questions um, and we will post on, in our forum and our main speaker and facilitators will answer you in the forum. Um, so after the webinar eight, uh, you will be provided with more references for follow up reading and practicing. Uh, and if you have further questions, please feel free to post them to our webinar forum on the Vietiso website. This brings me so nicely on to the summary of webinar eight. You have just heard the sharing and suggestions from our speaker and facilitators, as well as a discussion about how to evaluate teaching and learning websites based down the five main criteria and how to explore some websites and resources in ELT, including WeedWords, Class Jojo, Class 2. Um, Thank you for taking part in webinar eight, and we look forward to welcoming you to the upcoming PD webinars exclusive, in, exclusive to Vietnamese K-12 EFL teachers. Webinar nine about classroom-based assessment will be uh, this December. And there's a link uh, for proof of attendance and feedback survey. After completing the proof of attendance and feedback surveys, you might be eligible for an electronic certificate. 
So let's find the um, link in our chat box. So thank you very much and um, see you at the upcoming webinars. Once again, thank you and goodbye and have a good lunch. <laughs>